Today, the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority will host the second of four public meetings on its controversial expansion project. And tonight, the town hall will be in Newcastle. Our Jordan Daphnis is live at the Turnpike Authority with what we can expect for tonight. Jordan, good morning. Good morning, Robin and Lacey. There are going to be three meetings that residents can attend this week. The first one, like you said, being today. You know, this turnpike expansion has received a lot of backlash. And I don't understand how America, this is America. Every government is supposed to be responsive to the, the citizens. Tonight from 6 to 8, the OTA will talk with impacted residents at the Newcastle Public Schools Administration Building. The Oklahoma Turnpike Authority is now saying that the plan for the Turnpike expansion is not likely to change from the route study they have planned right now. That study footprint, that orange shaded section for the outer loop and the south extension, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that we're going to be within that section within that study area uh, about 95 percent of the time. The authority's plan is a 15-year, $5 billion long-range infrastructure investment, but many property owners say they're worried about having to sell or lose money on their land. At the state capitol, lawmakers have now pushed along a bill that would delay construction until the OTA completes additional studies on how the proposed route could impact homeowners. Now, for residents wanting to take part in meetings, we have that one today. There's also one tomorrow in Norman and one on Thursday in Morgan. You can find more information on the News 9 website. Live this morning, Jordan Daphne, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. Another testy showdown tonight as the Turnpike Authority held its latest public meeting over its controversial expansion plans. And groups opposed to the expansion even held their own counter event. Fox 25's Tom Ferguson was at the event and he joins us right now with a look at why some residents are so worried. Tom. Wendy, the group Pike Off OTA handing out these flyers to those in attendance tonight, explaining why their group is against these turnpikes. Tensions high at the Norman Central Library. The issue of right of way property acquisition at the forefront of resident Patrice Williams' concerns. It's frustrating. People build, they find the property they want in the area they want, and then it's ripped out from under them. And it's, it's heartbreaking. The environmental impact is also at the forefront of some residents' concerns. They're saying they're doing environmental studies, but they're giving it six months when it's going to take two years to do a true environmental study. The organization Wild Care Oklahoma says the expansion project will also be disastrous for wildlife that won't be able to access Lake Thunderbird if this proposal moves forward. Christina Rivas worries about what will happen to her family's home should it come in the path of the turnpikes. My concerns are that my house, my home, where my family has lived for 50 plus years on the, the house that my grandparents built is going to be taken away, that our lives are going to be literally destroyed. UTA defending the turnpike expansion arguing something needs to change with I-35. The numbers for 2019 were five accidents every day on average between Purcell and I-40 on I-35. Five accidents every day. They're not running into nothing. They're running into somebody else. That's 10 cars a day. And there is one final public meeting that OTA is holding that will be on Thursday at the Moore Library at 5.30 p.m. Live in the studio, Tom Ferguson, Fox 25 News. And the turnpike fight continues. We're live with the Newcastle protest. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Maddie Daddario. And I'm Tyler DeLuca. Adam and Harry, thank you. The fight over a new Oklahoma turnpike continues tonight at the Norman Public Library Central Branch. Last night, crowds gathered in Newcastle with questions and concerns about what the plan will do to homes and businesses. Our Unitely's Dana Searles is live with the story. Dana? Many homeowners are not happy with a plan to expand an Oklahoma turnpike that could go through properties affecting residents. The city of Norman will gather here tonight for the third Access Oklahoma meeting open to the public. Last night I went to Newcastle to hear what residents had to say. 
The Oklahoma Turnpike Authority's $5 billion project to expand the Kickapoo Turnpike throughout the state has residents and property owners outraged. I will no longer have neighbors living across the street from me. I will have empty spaces with a turnpike. They are building this across the aquifer that feeds my well. I'm worried about the runoff from the chemicals that are used on the road. I'm worried about the traffic. I am not happy about it. I didn't move to where I built my house in order to have a turnpike in my front yard. At last night's second Access Oklahoma meeting, residents had the opportunity to share their frustrations to OTA. We're sharing some information, trying to answer individual questions that some of the property owners and, and homeowners and residents might have. And then on the other side of that, we're trying to gather information. So if, if there's something in particular that's unique about a section of, the, uh, of somebody's property, and they think they're going to be affected, we want to hear that information. Although the OTA is attempting to provide residents with solutions, people are still against it. Get rid of the turnpike. It does not need to go up where it is set to be. They, can, they don't see us as people. They see us as rooftops. This is the second Access Oklahoma meeting, and Pike Off OTA is one group advocating against the expansion. Yeah, we're here to spread uh, real information, whereas the OTA is here to spread well, less than information. The meeting tonight will start at 5.30 here at the Norman Public Library Center location. There will be another meeting to Thursday night and more. And OU Nightly will be at both meetings to tell you what happens. Reporting live, Dana Searles, OU Nightly. Tempers flare in Norman during another PAC meeting on a proposed turnpike expansion. Homeowners furious over the prospect of possibly losing their houses to the project. One of the turnpikes would run from Newcastle to east of Norman. The Turnpike Authority also hopes to extend the Kickapoo Turnpike west of Lake Thunderbird. Well, tonight, residents got another chance to air out their frustrations during a third town hall with OTA. News Force Kaitor K joining us live with the new reaction. And Kaitor, some residents told you many of their questions are still not being answered. Yeah, they got individual FaceTime with OTA engineers and right-of-way acquisition specialists. But when their most pressing questions couldn't be answered, they wondered, what's the point? If we all band together, use your money, and protect our properties, are you going to come in and forcibly incarcerate us and steal our land? A fired-up crowd of at least 200 demanding clear and honest answers from the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. The agency setting up tables at the Norman Public Library where concerned residents could ask OTA staff one-on-one -on -one questions about their proposed turnpike. Like what's going to happen to our water supply? What's going to happen to our watershed? What's going to happen to the economy of Norman when you wipe out 650 homes? News 4 found that many residents felt their most pressing questions weren't being answered, such as if their particular home was at threat. We asked OTA Deputy Director Joe E. Kelly what was the point of the meeting if these important questions aren't answered. Well, hopefully we're able to answer some broad questions for them. You know, the individual questions about exactly where this road is going to be built, we just don't know that information yet. But really the point of tonight is that we're able to get information, contact information sometimes for people that maybe we can't get other ways. E. Kelly says specific questions may be able to be answered in six to eight months. As for now, they're still gathering info, maintaining that any displaced homes are making a sacrifice for, quote, the greater good of Oklahoma. These OTA representatives, they have nothing to say to me. They look me in the eye, they say they're sorry, but they don't care. And they aren't going to do anything unless we, the people, stop them. Tonight was the third of four public OTA meetings. The last one is this Thursday at the Moore Library. The Oklahoma Turnpike Authority is sharing new information this morning about how much money the agency will pay homeowners who are forced to give up their land for turnpike plans. Let's go to Artevis Hillis. She's live at the OTA with what that means for future projects like the one in Cleveland County. Tevis, good morning. Robin Lacey, good morning. Really a change of events. The Turnpike Authority will now release how much money they spend on buying different properties. That's one of the top concerns from property owners in Cleveland County fighting the proposed turnpike expansion there, losing homes and property value. I'm not trying to be anti-progress at all, but also it does not need to be at the expense of people and their businesses, their livelihoods and their homes. 
According to the Norman transcript, OTA spent $1.24 million to purchase land in Creek and Lincoln County for previous projects. Initially, the authority claimed the payout was closer to $1.95 million. The Oklahoma Open Records Act is forcing the OTA to release payment information. Now Oklahomans will know how much each acre is going for so that no one is getting a better deal than the other person. The Turnpike Authority is holding another public meeting tomorrow on the proposed expansion in Cleveland County. That starts at 530 Thursday night at the Moore Library. We've been hearing a lot of concerns about people not wanting to, this to happen, but OTA says those plans will likely not change. Live in Oklahoma City this morning, Tavis Hillis, Oklahoma Zone News 9. Show us the money. People whose homes are in the path of the planned turnpike extension now have a good idea of what they may be offered for their property. News Force Ashley Moss has details. New at 6. OTA telling me in a statement today that they're obligated by the Oklahoma Open Records Act to release the amount that they're paying to individual landowners who might be affected by this planned turnpike expansion project. The OTA is changing course. Earlier this month, the agency refused to hand over information showing how much it had previously paid for land that was eventually used for turnpikes. A reporter with CNHI Oklahoma, that's the parent company to 14 Oklahoma newspapers, asked for the information but was turned down. The agency claimed state law kept it from having to release critical financial data to the public. And it was an absurd exemption for the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority to claim. And I'm glad that they finally realized that. Now, the OTA has reversed its decision to keep those numbers under wraps. In a statement to News 4, the agency says in part, it is the legal opinion of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority that the Oklahoma Open Records Act obligates the agency to disclose the amount paid on individual real estate acquisition transactions. Community advocates see this new transparency as a turning point in the fight to push back on the turnpikes. It's the property owners that are the stakeholders. And they need real answers to real questions. People need to realize that it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. And if we all start squeaking at the same time, something's going to happen in our favor. Well, experts say this reversal is good for transparency and good for Oklahoma citizens. This government belongs to all of us, and that includes the people who are being paid the money. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they're being taken advantage of, we should know. Ashley Moss. Oklahoma's News 4. The Turnpike Authority says they plan to gather more information through impact studies. We have requested an exact list of studies to be conducted along with the dates they'll be completed. A resolution that if voted for would charge the state to do an audit looking into several records of the Turnpike Authority. A Democratic senator filing this resolution says that she used language from a Republican platform. Keeping all the information on their end gives them more power, and it also delays holding them accountable. Senator Mary Boren says she has bipartisan support for an audit of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. She says it would prove they shouldn't be building more turnpikes. Kind of like buying cars. You can't just be upside down on a car and keep buying cars and filling up your front yard with cars that you haven't paid for. She says an audit would expose exactly where the agency stands. She could tell us what is in the inventory, What's the payoff amount? How much time, how much would it take to pay off the turnpikes? How much are we getting from tolls? How much are we getting from bonds? What, what is the bond revenue and interest rate looks like? And the fees associated with that. And that this has been a desire of Oklahomans for decades. From day one or two, they said we need to audit the OTA. She says as efforts continue, she's hopeful the turnpike could be stopped Completely. I am hopeful that we can stop this practice in this um, standard operating procedure in this business model in Oklahoma. Elise Jones, KOCO 5 News. New developments in the fight against the new turnpike expansion proposal in Cleveland County. Norman State Senator Mary Boren is now calling for an audit of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. News 9's Tevis Hillis joins us live at the OTA with the update. Tevis, good morning. Colby, good morning. Now, Senator Bourne says she believes lawmakers will support this resolution as the Republican Party has called on a moratorium on building new turnpikes until the other ones are paid off. We have a value system statewide that is bipartisan to not just continue to build 
toll roads until we have a plan to pay off the ones that we've already built. According to the Norman transcript, the resolution written by Democratic Senator Mary Bourne would audit the turnpike bond payoff schedule, which could lead to toll roads becoming free. After that, they would be given to the Oklahoma Department of Transportation. According to state law, the governor would not have to sign this resolution. The audit would be performed before December 1st of this year, and then the audit would be given to the governor and other state leaders. Happening tonight, the OTA is hosting the last public meeting for this week on its proposed expansion in Cleveland County. Now that'll begin at 530 in the Moore Library. And while there's been a lot of pushback, OTA says likely these plans will not change any further. Live in Oklahoma City this morning, Tevis Ellis, Oklahoma Zone News 9. A state senator is calling for a new audit into the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority as Oklahomans protest plan turnpike expansion. Senator Mary Boren is praising the state GOP's call for a moratorium on further turnpikes until the ones already built are paid off. Fox 25's Tom Ferguson has been looking into this and he joins us live. So Tom, how is the OTA responding tonight? Well, the OTA is looking at these population and traffic growth projections in support of more turnpikes. On the other hand, Bourne's telling me she does not trust their numbers. Les Smith, a volunteer with Pikeoff OTA, a group opposed to the turnpikes, echoes Bourne's call for a more in-depth performance audit of the authority. Anytime that the OTA can become more transparent on what they're doing, that's gonna benefit us as a citizen so that we know what they're doing. I like the fact that she's asking them how long it's going to take the toll roads to be paid off. The OTA supporting Boren's call for such an audit. We welcome a performance audit. Uh, uh, that would, wouldn't be a bad deal for ODOT or for OTA to uh, engage in. On the other hand, the OTA is pushing back against some points raised in Boren's proposal. Assumes that we're going to do uh, irreparable damage to the watershed and to the groundwater in and around Lake Thunderbird, and there, we have no evidence of that. Born calling for public transit and HOV lanes as an alternative to the turnpikes. We just need to progress as a state in resolving our transportation issues without using toll roads. Smith voicing his opposition to these roads alongside a number of central Oklahomans. A toll road that takes more than 30 years to pay off, is there a need for something like that? I'm Gabriella Tamani, and this is an OUTV News Brief. The Oklahoma Turnpike Authority continues to host public meetings to discuss a turnpike expansion that would run through East Norman. OTA held its fourth meeting in Moore yesterday where residents voiced concerns about the turnpike's location as well as environmental issues. Today, the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority got the money they need to start the construction of new toll roads. And it is not a small chunk of change either. News 4's Ashley Moss joins us with those details. Ashley. That's right, that money, $200 million line of credit. Now the board will vote to secure the money. Residents fighting that construction say they're disappointed, but not surprised. Well, they've just moved a step closer to making this turnpike a reality in, in our neighborhood. And, and of course, that concerns us. Today. OTA voting on their approval to bankroll the next phase of development in the contentious Access Oklahoma Turnpike Project. Transportation Secretary Tim Gatz saying the vote to move forward with the $200 million interim financing is critical. And that interim financing will help us get out of the starting blocks uh, and get to the point where we've got better engineering, better information, and we've pulled the trigger on a lot of the environmental studies. It seems to me that they're building new turnpikes to finance the, the old turnpikes and, and maintain them. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not an expert on turnpikes. I just know they were supposed to have been paid for. I know they're not personally coming after me, but I can't help take it personally. Gatz also telling News 4, after the environmental studies are done and engineering gets involved, the proposed impact could narrow. One of the things that we have discussed at length is the need to be able to do this over some time uh, to make sure that we can provide for those opportunities, especially in areas where we've got housing shortages. Saying the agency is committed to helping Oklahomans find replacement housing when they do get to the right-of-way acquisition process. Concerned residents telling News 4 today, no one's looking for a substitution. One of the most disappointing things is, is if, if it happens, I'm going to have to clean out my house instead of my kids after I'm gone. So what's next? The Council of Bond Oversight will meet and vote on that issue next Wednesday. We're also hoping to get a better idea of what environmental studies will be done and when.
Oklahoma Turnpike Authority will meet this morning to consider a big funding resolution. The money would go towards repairs and new projects that many residents are fighting against. Colby Thielen has the latest with the Turnpike Authority's situation. Hey, Colby, good morning. Hey, good morning. Well, this resolution would look to open a revolving line of credit with Wells Fargo. It would be used as interim financing for turnpike projects and for repairs. Now, the resolution states that that principal amount would not exceed $200 million. The money would go in part toward a portion of the capital costs on certain projects, refunding previously issued bonds, and funding reserves. This vote comes amid criticism over the OTA's Access Oklahoma project. In particular, a proposal to build a turnpike extension right through Cleveland County. Even just last week, State Senator Mary Boren proposed a resolution of her own, calling for an audit of the OTA. Other members of the state legislature also want to see new projects halted until current projects are paid off. We have a value system statewide that is bipartisan to not just continue to build toll roads until we have a plan to pay off the ones that we've already built. Now, this meeting starts at 1030 this morning. There is a live stream available to watch it if you would like. And keep in mind, you can review this resolution and all the documents that go before the OTA board. You can do that over at pikepass.com. Colby Thielen, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. The Oklahoma Turnpike Authority voted today to approve $200 million to help with financing projects. This includes the controversial Turnpike expansion in Cleveland County. This clears the way for the authority to begin the project. The money will fund the various studies to determine the effects of the new road. It also will fund the needed engineering projects to help crews determine how the project will be built when it comes time to begin construction. The authority says this will give the public better information about what they can expect from the project. We've got a 15 year window we're dealing with here that was the right thing to do because it, we have to engage the public in these conversations and give ourselves time to do the engineering, to appropriately deliver the studies, make sure we're doing the things the way that they need to be done. Uh, and again, that was one of the things that we really started out with is, is let's give this a long range look uh, instead of just operating in a five year window. The Turnpike Authority recognizes people are concerned over losing their homes and may not have anywhere to go. They say that's why they're taking a long-term process to work through everything, adding the current housing situation is not permanent, and the OTA will help people find new homes when the time comes. Well, Jason Shelby, a lot of items to get to during this board meeting for later this morning. One of the big ticket items, the board will consider approving a $200 million line of credit to help fund upcoming projects. This is all part of Access Oklahoma. Now that is OTA's 15 year $5 billion improvement plan. That plan includes widening the Turner Turnpike to six lanes between OKC and Bristow, as well as adding more on and off ramps and adding relief routes around the OKC Metro. Also on the agenda would be a speed limit increase on the Indian Nation Turnpike near McAllister to 80 miles per hour. Also, they plan to honor two turnpike workers for their heroic efforts during our state's last round of snowstorms. A lot to get to during this meeting. It begins at 1030 this morning. We will keep you updated. For now, reporting live, Zach Rael, KOCO 5 News. State Senator hosted a prayer vigil today over the proposed turnpike expansion. Senator Warren Hamilton led the vigil. The goal was to find strength through hope and meditation. Many of those there are afraid they will lose their homes and not have anywhere to go. One woman says she just moved into a new home for her bee farming business and now lives with uncertainty. How many of you would like your lives put on hold for 10 years? We bought the property to run a commercial bee business, a small Oklahoma business, to build our home. And so now all of that is on hold. I don't want to build if I'm going to have a six lane turnpike out my front door. The OTA recently approved a $200 million deal that will help begin the process for the expansion, but OTA says this is still the early stages of the project. They add it's still unclear how many homes it'll end up taking out. Now to worries facing an Oklahoma family as plans for a new turnpike move forward. They are fearing a new toll road will split their farm literally in half. That farm is close to Norman, but as News 4's Natalie Clydesdale reports, the family is vowing to put up a fight in order to keep their land. 
Jeanette Ward says she and her husband balanced multiple jobs at a time for decades to save up for this farmland. And the proposed turnpike expansion project would cut it right in half, destroying all they worked for. This is our family farm, and we cannot have a turnpike cut right through the middle of it. 82 year old Jeanette Ward says she and her husband Don poured decades worth of blood, sweat, and tears into this 400 acre farmland near Norman. I don't know how many hours a day, and I was trying to raise three kids at the same time. The land off of Indian Hills Road is where 23 of their family members, scattered between eight houses, call home. It is our foundation of keeping the family together. But Ward fears the state's $5 billion access plan could separate her close knit family. The proposed turnpike along Indian Hills Road would connect Newcastle to Norman and by default cut the Ward's land in half. This is basically uh, our hay barn and the feedlot, and my son's home and my other son's home. And this is the river back over here. And it's going to cut right through there. It's so devastating. The OTA standing by the necessity of the new road. We have to find a reliever route. And says they'll compensate those who are impacted the best they can. It's a tall ask. And I wish we didn't have to do that. And I, I wish these folks weren't put in this position. And they are making a sacrifice that we can't repay completely that sacrifice. We feel like we don't have a choice, and this proposed alignment is the very best area in which to build. Natalie Clydesdale, Oklahoma's News 4. All right, Natalie, thank you. Mrs. Ward says she plans to continue to show up to every Turnbike meeting and fight to keep her family's land all in one piece. The Oklahoma Turnpike Authority is now facing a lawsuit over its proposed expansions in the state. That suit alleges the agency's current plans exceed its legal authority. Fox 25's Tom Ferguson joins us live right now to help us uh, break all this down for us. Tom, what'd you find out? Dan, this petition filed in the Cleveland County District Court yesterday alleges the OTA can't legally build the South Extension, the East West Connector, or the Tri City Connector in its Access Oklahoma project. Civil engineer and plaintiff in the case, Amy Serrato, is hoping this lawsuit puts a stop to the OTA. We really want the Supreme Court to come down and tell the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority no, because they've never been told no before. The suit alleges that the statute governing the OTA only permits the authority to build projects at locations authorized by the state legislature, and that those three parts of the Access Oklahoma plan fall outside that scope. Oklahoma is a law and order state. The, base, the basic premise of law and order is that you follow the law. Other parts of the Access Oklahoma plan, like improvements to already existing turnpikes, do not run outside the law, according to the court petition. The OTA is requesting a $200 million line of credit from the Oklahoma Council of Bond Oversight for the Access project. That council will take up that request on Wednesday. The council oversees financing requests from state agencies and authorities. The bond council is approving a line of credit loan on a project that isn't authorized by statute. That should cause them to hesitate loaning money for a project that's not legally authorized. The Access Oklahoma project is a $5 billion, 15-year long plan to add turnpikes in the state to address infrastructure needs according to the Turnpike Authority. We're feeling really optimistic about this legal challenge because we've tried to talk to the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority about how these routes make no engineering sense, how they make no sense from an environmental standpoint, how they're not authorized by law to even be building it, and they just, all of our arguments are falling on deaf ears. Pike Off OTA, a group opposed to the turnpikes, will be at Wednesday's meeting to encourage the bond council to deny the OTA's request. And we did reach out to the OTA for comment on these latest developments. I'm being told the authority is evaluating this petition. Live at the OTA headquarters in Oklahoma City, Tom Ferguson, Fox 25 News.
A controversial Oklahoma Turnpike Authority project is hitting a temporary bump in the road tonight. A request for a line of credit to expand the turnpike network was approved, but with some conditions. Fox 25's Peyton May is here with us tonight. So Peyton, people against this project are actually telling you this is a major breakthrough. Yeah, Dan, that's exactly right. It's a conflict that many Norman homeowners say have been an emotional roller coaster since February when many community members found out their homes were in the path of a new highway infrastructure improvement project called the Access Oklahoma. Today, as the OTA asked for approval on a $200 million line of credit at the Oklahoma Council of Bond Oversight meeting, a group called Pike Off OTA made sure their voices were heard. Community members fearful of losing their homes to a new turnpike extension filling the meeting room. Today is the first time that there really has been some significant feedback that this state is listening and paying attention and cares. Council members ultimately deciding that the OTA is approved for the line of credit, but under the conditions that the money can't be used for three different Access Oklahoma projects, while a lawsuit filed by Pike Off OTA is pending. Secretary of Transportation Tim Gatz saying he respects the decision, but is aware of the future impacts. Based on the Council of Bond Oversight's approval today, we won't be able to use that interim financing. Uh, so again, does that bring a new dynamic into the uh, consideration, sure. Gatz adding that he's focused on the recent legal proceeding that will be ongoing. In the meantime, those on the other side of the lawsuit say they're finally being heard. The council did exactly what it should have done. Well, it's definitely a win. I don't think the OTA has ever had this much resistance to projects in the past, and we have thousands of people that have joined with Pike Off OTA. While Goff OTA members say it's a step in the right direction, they haven't quite crossed the finish line. But what we are concerned about with them getting a $200 million line of credit is how are we going to account for where they're spending that money. While the money can't be used for the South Extension, east-west connector or the tri-city connector until the lawsuit is settled the money can be used for other access projects we have maps to the different extension projects on our website okcfox.com live in studio peyton may fox 25 news legal fight is now brewing over those controversial plans to build new turnpikes in oklahoma a group of oklahomans are now suing in an attempt to block the construction but state officials are pushing forward anyway news force ashley moss as the new developments. During today's meeting, the Council of Bond Oversight unanimously approving that $200 million line of credit for the Access Oklahoma Turnpike Plan, except for those routes that are now pending litigation. And that's going to take a lot of work on our part to keep them accountable. Norman resident Amy Serrato telling News 4 she and others have filed a lawsuit asking the courts to decide if OTA's turnpike plans for the Oklahoma City metro area, Normand, and down to Purcell are legal. We are hoping that we can take this all the way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court could come down and say, you are not authorized for these routes, you must cease and desist and stop holding these homeowners hostage. The just filed lawsuit hampering the turnpike authorities' efforts to move forward with their plans along those routes even after the Council of Bond Oversight unanimously reviewed and approved $200 million in interim financing on Wednesday. OTA telling News 4 the funding is for planning and engineering studies, and they'll get started on other projects in the meantime, including widening the Turner and Will Rogers turnpikes. Lawyers for the group telling News 4 it was a necessary next step in the turnpike fight, but also saying slowing things down could ultimately be in the hands of legislators. When the legislature hasn't authorized you to put turnpikes in where you're trying to put them, you need to go get the legislature to say, we agree, and vote those in. I'm planning on behalf of my constituents to move forward on trying to create more transparency and accountability on part of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. But I do not want to give anybody false hope because it's going to be an uphill battle. At the Capitol, for Oklahoma's News 4, Ashley Moss. OTA says the money approved today will be used for planning and engineering studies, and they'll also get started on other projects in the meantime, including widening the Turner and Will Rogers turnpikes and adding access points and interchanges to existing toll roads.